involved in a program uh, with Earthwatch as Daintree's hidden coastline, and uh, we've taken on the, you know, looking at what's around me here, which is uh, absolutely exotic mangrove forests uh, here in this Daintree region, you know, wet tropics, world heritage, you know, wilderness. Uh, we have uh, some of the highest diversity of mangroves in the world. In this one river system, uh, the Daintree, we're talking about over 30 species, and uh, that's quite a proportion when you think of the world has only got 80. Um, so to find them all in one system is really exotic. Uh, because the complexity of the different mangrove species just means that you end up with uh, different structural uh, arrangements. Like here, you can see it's like a play gym. You know, there's roots everywhere, uh, uh, and you've got to climb around like in a jungle gym. It brings back the child in you. <laughs> it's really exciting. Uh, when we got here, um, the scientist, Dr. Norman Duke, he gave us this wonderful. Um, preparatory talk about the mangroves. I, I felt that I was ready for what I was going to see. And uh, when we got out into the field, uh, they, there was no, no great pressure. You know, we were doing good work and um, we were learning along the way and, and that was very nice. There was a very uh, gentle touch with that, but we were doing something important at the same time and you could feel it. Yeah, so this is a 20 by 20 meter biomass plot in uh, a mid inch tidal mangrove forest where we've Marked out trees that were marked in um, 1987, I think, was the last time it was measured. And uh, what we're doing is measuring the girth of the tree so we can tell how big the tree is and then relate that to biomass. We're also measuring the height um, so we know about forest dynamics and things like that. So we've got Jerome there with the hypsometer shooting the trees with a laser to get the height. We've got um, Honey there writing down the notes. Jacob over there, he's measuring the girth of the tree with a tape measure where there's a nail in the tree, so we know next time we come back, we can measure the same spot. Then um, we've got Pete there, who's tagging the trees with flagging tape, so we know which, which ones have been measured, and what they're if there's new tags, so new trees grow up, we can measure them as well. Well, what we hope to see with these plots, because they're one of the very few plots that we've got really old data sets for, this is like so rare to have a data set that's this old, that um, we can work out forest dynamics, so how mangrove forests change over time, so that we can work out how much biomass accumulates over time, whether we're growing in carbon or as the forest gets older, whether it loses carbon in terms of biomass as the trees get bigger, do they then thin out so much that we lose mass? And knowing that we'll be able to use that to quantify carbon in mangrove forests around Australia. The health of this forest has to be maintained if we're going to keep that carbon sink uh, building up. So we have a number of other innovative uh, methods that we've got out there that we're trialling and we're developing as part of this Mangrove Watch program uh, which is coordinated now with Earthwatch and that is to use video recordings with uh, GPS. You know, we're looking at trying to uh, find ways that are non-destructive uh, uh, in measuring uh, I suppose the biomass which equates to the carbon of those forests and their diversity um, by doing it remotely and we can do that by filming from the river you know, as we drive the boat along the shoreline uh, we can film the edge so we have this method we call the shoreline video assessment method. Around the world mangrove forests are in trouble they're disappearing fast damaged by uh, I suppose an increasing need for coastal resources and space. Um, we really need to do something urgently um, they're being lost much faster rate than rainforests, uh, you know, proportionally. At this stage, we have to do something now. Uh, we have to do something while, oh, well, we've got some left. You know, Australia is very fortunate in having large areas of mangrove forests in the world. We need more observers. We need a, more of a footprint of, of awareness and understanding uh, to, to protect these places. We know they're valuable. Getting pe local people involved in mangrove management is like community-based management is a really important tool because if people take ownership over their, their ecosystems and they're empowered by knowledge for external sources of people like me who have a bit of science background and come in and say, yep, this is good, and then take that to, to management agencies to say, you've got to keep this. And I think that's the way forward is to really give local ownership and local empowerment over the forest. More people should come down here and check it out. It's, uh, place where no one ever goes so you're charting new territory doing really important research that has real benefits for real world people um, 
and it's, it's not exactly hard work. I'm not sweating here, we're just measuring a few trees, it's great. So uh, everyone should come along and get out. If you're thinking of coming along, just do it. Come, you know, we need you.